I've been thinking lately about a lot of things that Frank Morris said to me back in the 70s in Mexico City that I still can't answer. Simple things that just didn't fit. One thing was something he told me about a, a phantom. There was something about a flashlight. There was several different things that I just couldn't put the pieces together. And a couple days ago, I stumbled upon these, these moonlight murders in Texarkana back in 1946. And I read everything I could on it. And after seeing all of that, a whole lot of things came back to me. So I decided it's time to make another video. I know there's a lot of you out there that can't stand it because I make these videos. But, you know, if the truth hurts you that bad, I don't know what to tell you. If you believe everything that you see in the media and everything that the government tells you, you're going to walk around in the dark all the time until you run into a wall. Frank Morris used to complain about people like that. He used to say they needed killing. That was Frank, okay, so don't get mad at me. Why wouldn't he say that? He was a serial killer. He did tell me about Betty Jo Booker. He told me her name because I had a cousin named Betty Jo and he was making his word association relationship there about her. And he told me that he wore a mask. He told me a few other things. We'll, we'll get to that. But it just distresses me that, that Frank was released from prison in 1945 for about a year. That's the only time in his entire life that he was legally out of prison. And that's when the murders happened. They were done by a murderer who wore a mask. They were done by a person who was smart enough to not get caught. I mean, those three things alone are enough for me to say that, you know, he would be the prime suspect. But the fact that he told me about these murders and made them look like they weren't murders, I'll tell you why as we go along. But that's enough to to seal the deal for me. Frank was the, the Texarkana Moonlight murderer. Now, I put together some pictures here that I got off of the Internet that I want you to see. This is a newspaper picture of... Betty Jo Booker and Paul Martin, who were killed by the Texarkana Moonlight murderer, known as the Phantom Killer. And Frank told me that that's who he was. And I'm going to tell you how all of that worked. What I've seen on the internet about the Moonlight Murders of Texarkana, which was in 1946, has kind of answered all of the uh, questions I had in my mind about things that Frank told me that I never could figure out. I want to start out with this card that he showed me in Mexico, and I distinctly remember this card. When I came across this card on the internet, my eyes got really big. I was sure then that... that um, he was involved in this murder and as I went through it I'm sure that he was the one that did it and I'll tell you why. Let's start out with the first thing that jogged my memory and helped me to remember all of this. This is a card or a ticket that Frank showed me back in 1970 about a dance that he went to and he saw a girl playing in a band. Her name was Betty Jo Booker. This was at the BFW club in Texarkana. He ended up assaulting her and her boyfriend and killing both of them. This card is what made me remember that Frank had talked to me about those moonlight murders. And from there, the rest of it came back to me in another sort of a haunting nightmare of memories. When Frank was telling me these stories, he was pretty sure that I really wasn't capturing all of it, but I was getting the part that he wanted me to get. He told me that he was once known as the Phantom. And he had talked about masks before, 
and he made a big deal about having worn a mask at this one point in time. It wasn't specific about when it was, but he did tell me later that it was in Texarkana, and it was back during World War II. So all of that fits together. Frank knew I was in the comic books, so he started the conversation off with, you know, have you ever looked at the comic comic book about the Phantom? And I told him I had, and he actually showed me a picture where he had drawn a picture of the Phantom on the Mary Pilker Christmas card. This is something I've showed you before. I'll put it in a link up here. but. Uh, I couldn't remember what he had told me about that, but now that I've studied these phantom murders, now I remember. So I want to show you a picture of the phantom. This is a picture of the phantom, kind of a classic comic book that I used to look at. and one that Frank Morris brought to my attention back in Mexico in 1970. This is a picture of the Mary Poker Christmas card. This is a picture of the Mary Poker Christmas card with an arrow pointing to the picture of the Phantom sitting on the ground with a flashlight in his hand. Frank kept telling me that that flashlight was very important. In a minute, I'm going to show you the importance of that flashlight. Now remember that Frank drew that picture of the Phantom into that card, and he told me in 1970 that that was a picture of the Phantom. Now here is the importance of the flashlight that Frank is holding, or the Phantom is holding, on the Mary Pilker Christmas card. This flashlight was found at the scene of one of the assaults during the Texarkana Moonlight Murders, where Frank was known as the Phantom. And he told me that he was known as the Phantom at one time in his life, during World War II. On with the significance of this flashlight, there is another little detail that I want you to know. When he sent the Eureka card, uh, there was a picture of a little pen light with some keys attached to it, and he told me that what was that, that was about. I told you on my video about the Eureka card. You can look at that. But I told you, I believe I told you on there that I couldn't remember what he had said about it. And now, after going over these moonlight murder things, wow. You mean, I mean, I, I know now. This is a picture of the keys and the pen light that the Zodiac Killer sent with the Eureka card. Now, I'm going to tell you the significance of this. He told me long ago, I didn't remember it, but I remember now after seeing the files on the Texarkana Moonlight Murders, he said that this, he put that pin light on there because that is a flashlight which is a key to his identity. That's what this means. The flashlight is a key to his identity. He was relating back to the Texarkana Moonlight Murders to let people know that he was the Phantom back then. And that he was the one that killed those kids. You see, these are all clues to his identity. Way up when the Mary Pilker Christmas card was sent, he's trying to tell you that he was the Phantom who killed those people in Texarkana back in 1946 during that one year in his life where he was legally released from prison.
And now Frank also told me that he wore a mask. He told me about the one victim that he forced him to pull down his britches. And we had gotten started talking about a 32 Colt automatic pistol because my dad had one and I really liked it because it fit my hand really well. And he played off of that. Yeah, that thing, that gun really fits well in your hand, don't it? And I go, yeah, it does. And he goes, he started telling me about that he used one one time to scare somebody. And I go, what do you mean? What did you do that for? He goes, I just want to see if the guy would get scared. And I go, so what did you do? And he said he told the guy to take his britches down. That's an old terminology for pants. And I was like, well, why would you do that? And then Frank said, well, just think about it for a minute. You could tell a guy to do a lot of things, but what's going to scare him the most? And he looked at me and said, would it scare you if somebody told you take your pants down? And I told him, yeah, I guess it would, but... Uh, you know, he goes, well, would you do it? And I go, no. And he goes, what if they were pointing a gun at you? And I go, well, yeah. And he goes, well, he did it. And I go, really? And then why did you do that? And he said, oh, I just want to see if I could scare him. I go, so did you shoot him? And he said, no. He said that there was a little fight and, you know, he made it look like it wasn't a big deal. He didn't talk about assaulting the girl, but I did ask him about why would you make a man take off his pants and he made a big deal about, well, his girlfriend was there, so that way they wouldn't know that, it, you know, I mean, I didn't want to see him with his pants off. I just wanted to see if I could scare him into taking him off. I mean, he really admitted to me, uh, to all of the murders that he committed, and it's, it's a shame nothing can be done about it because he may still be alive. Frank asked me if I'd ever seen this picture of the Phantom spanking a girl, and I told him I had and that the reason that I remember it was because I read a lot of comic books but I never seen anyone getting a spanking on a comic book before. We kind of chuckled about that. And then Frank asked me, do you know why she's getting spanked? And I said, no. And he goes, because she did something she wasn't supposed to. And I go, really? And he said, yeah. And he goes, so she's getting it good. And I go, really? And he, he, he made a big deal out of it and said something about that that was his job to make sure that people got their punishment for doing the things that they weren't supposed to do and I go well what do you think she was doing and he goes she was fiddle farting and effing around like most girls do that was the attitude that he had about women and that terminology fiddle farting and effing around is was kind of popular back then and he used that in one of the zodiac uh, cards When the Zodiac struck, he usually murdered couples. He was always more brutal to the women than the men. And after a string of four or five murders, then he would murder a man by himself. And he told me the significance of that. He said that he wanted people to know that it wasn't about women, that he didn't have a hang-up about women, but he was so adamant in trying to tell me that, that it was obvious that, you know, he was trying to hide it from himself. That's why he killed Paul Stein all the way out there by himself in a different part of San Francisco or whatever, and over there in California, to let people know that, and this is his exact words, it was not about women, and he got really angry like that. I wanted him to know it was not about women. He said that they were saying that he had a hang-up about his mother and he was claiming that he was an orphan and he never knew his mother, but personally I think that he had a hang-up about a female foster parent that had nearly beat him to death on multiple occasions. There was a Texas Ranger involved in trying to catch the phantom killer of Texarkana. His name was Captain Manuel T. Gonzalez. This is the first official that Frank kind of went after and he made a big deal about that to me also. He told me that the guy's name was Gonzalez, but that he had changed the spelling, or that he spelled it differently, which he does. It's not spelled the way Gonzalez is usually spelled. And Frank made some comments about he may be trying to hide something or whatever, but Manuel Gonzalez was a 
kind of a camera hog type guy. He really liked to be in the public eye. It seemed to me more to him than actually solving the cases from what I've gathered. Let me show you a picture of him and, and I want to tell you something about him because his picture appears on the Pines card. I can't find a picture of it where it's visible, but I'll tell you about that. This is a picture of Captain Manuel T. Gonzalez. He was the Texas Ranger that was in charge of trying to track down the Phantom Killer of Texarkana back in 1946. There's a picture of him that appears on the Pines card. I'm going to show you where that's at. Now this is a picture of the Zodiac Killer's Pines card. He told me that this contained a treasure map. And he didn't tell me what the treasure was, but it turns out it's a grave site of one of his victims, Miss Donna Lass. And there's a picture of her laying down in the grave right here. Now, inside this little shed over here is a picture of a Texas Ranger looking guy with a tall cowboy hat on. Frank told me that picture represented both the governor of Texas and this captain of the Texas Rangers who was in charge of trying to find out who the Phantom Killer was in 1946. His name was Lone Wolf Gonzalez. One last item for you here. Frank showed me this old map of Texarkana back in 1970. I don't remember what he said about it except that I do remember that he said that it kind of bothered him I guess because all of the roads were perfect squares all in line and then there was this one road right here that cuts across everything. He seemed to be uneasy with that. I guess it was part of his schizophrenia but then again he said that there were a lot of towns that were roads were made like that. This thing with Frank Morrison, the Anglin brothers, the Zodiac killers, Dan Cooper, the whole thing is really complicated. I know a lot of you don't understand it, and I understand why. It's very, very long, it's very convoluted, and it takes a lot of research to really put the pieces of the puzzle together. And you won't put the pieces of the puzzle together unless you know everything that Frank told me. Without that information, then none of this would make any sense to me. And I want you to know I'm not interested in any of these cases, honestly. The only thing that brought it to my interest was the day that I realized I knew this guy. And he had admitted to me to all of the murders and the crimes and the D.B. Cooper jump and everything that he did. And when I started studying it, I realized that all the timelines fit, all of the keys and the clues fit together based on the things that he told me. You know, I just wanted to share it with the world.